Good morning children, today we will be looking at the mini amp here, current draw of some new batteries from Hobby King. I'll be fucked doing that, instead, check out that motherfucker, yes, that is a full size fucking drag and no apologies for the swearing, it is the one model that I said that I was never ever going to buy. Happy days, happy days, happy days. Right, Mr. Price of course literally has turned up. Well, obviously I've been in there uh, licking the uh, coffin aids off the box. Uh, it's been sat in their warehouse for, since last week. Uh, massive thank you to Will uh, before we actually, before we go any further. Um, yeah, thank you Will, you know who you are and happy days. I. It's this, believe it or not, is a kit which has never actually been built. We did look at one on eBay which went for £529. Uh, it did have a very questionable uh, age vector in it and a video transmitter which was pretty questionable as well and also it was a four hour drive uh, there and back for me so I kind of, it went over the budget and yeah, decided against that one. And we had this one as a potential one here in the background. Uh, so I went for the one from Will, uh, and happy days. Uh, obviously, those of you looking for someone to blame for this, uh, his name is Josh. It just hits as well up there, mate. <sighs> uh, he's got a four, and of course Andy as well. Uh, Andy's had a full-size drag for years. Wanna One of my biggest problems with uh, the full size track is that you generally normally have got to get into very, because it, it, it's just because of the size of it, you have to get into a specialized motors, specialized ESCs, uh, and into, spe and the big one, and I mean this, really mean this, the big one, the specialized batteries as well. So, to give you an early heads up, this one will be running, I've got a motor being imported, it's a badass, I forgot what the name is, it's a massive motor, it's the same style of what Josh has got on the back of his, uh, but it's a 500 or 490 kV, uh, and I'm going to be running it on 8S, and the way we're just going to do that is with those batteries which you saw a few moments ago, they're 4S batteries, and we'll be stringing them up as 8S, uh, because I don't want, I, I, I'm trying not, uh, and this was always my issue with the uh, full size track is to get it to 4S is not enough. Um, the, the, the motor, which I've actually, actually Josh gave me in one of the motors, uh, one of the standard right wing motors, is that they are designed to, to be flown uh, on 4S, uh, on, on 5S. And of course, I'm not buying a 5 I don't want to buy a dedicated set of batteries for just one specific model, of course, because I have a destroy or decimate this one then I get stuck with a, a, a load of very odd batteries. Do, can, you, can you see my point for that is that I didn't want to get waylaid with a very odd peculiar set of batteries which are very expensive um, as a whole. Right I think I've got myself in it so let's take a look at this. Um, as you can tell I've not literally been in it myself so I'm being a little bit cautious. Right, I think the best thing for me to do is actually get this off the desk and then we'll put it on the desk and we'll have a proper look as well. So with that said, any of you, have, have anybody, anybody who's watching this, have you owned uh, a full size track? Is it something which you have thought about owning? Is it something that you, would you buy? Look at the fucking size of this. Unreal, absolutely unreal. Uh, Build for the full size track. Absolute chart, look at the bloody size of that. <laughs> Just for comparison, I've got my mini drat to uh, repair because I kind of broke it on the weekend. I had an L9R fail safe on me, an L9R, they do like six miles. And I, the, 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 I 3D printed a new one, checked all the wiring on and stuff, and got up and running. Uh, and on the weekend, my. Yeah, the L9 failed, line of sight, I was flying it line of sight, Re I had a real good flying day on Sunday, and flew, uh, you were, I must have done 30 packs 
on Saturday alone. I did spend quite a lot, a lot of time on the flight line, as you can tell. Uh, but this one fell safe on me uh, and went in the tree, and it went in the tree hard. It wasn't full knacker, but it was a good 50, 60, 60 miles an hour it went in that tree. Was on the goggles? No, line of sight. It literally fell safe on me because you heard it screaming at the end and the yeah. throttle was right down. Right, just bring it up to speed. There's a mini drack in that tree. <laughs> Goblin coming in from some direction. There you go. It went in eye as well. I can hear it. Where is it? I can hear it. Yeah, I can hear it. Oh. Something fell. No, I see it. Yeah, right there. Oh, uh, shit. Oh, baby. Uh, and it just fell safe on that angle on me, uh, and yeah, went in. And it, it, that's uh, the screeching of the motor. Uh, and I go, that's not me. It's down, and I'd already turned the, the throttle off. It was second, like the second it went in. Uh, so yeah, uh, get back. That's <laughs> kind of the scale of what we're dealing with here. That's a mini one. On actually, just up here next to me, I do have one of the prototypes of the nano track which is on my to-do list to, to get flying again so there, there you go there's the three different tracks together so we've got the nano we've got the mini which is to be honest that the mini has been the mini track has been absolutely fantastic it was expensive uh, don't get me wrong but it did fly really well and there's, no, there's, no, there's nothing which compares to it for, for a profile in the sky. And of course, we now have Bad Matt, uh, a daddy drack underneath there as well. Uh, the phone quality on these are absolutely fantastic. I'm sure many of you know that the uh, quality of the phone for the drack is, uh, and the mini drack, and of course now the nano drack are just, just renowned. They are so well moulded. I love balsa. Balsa flies the best. Just look at balsa, nothing really compares to balsa at all. If you take a look at the wings, they are just so light. And the reason why they're so light is because I have air holes between my ribs. That's right, my wings have A holes. A holes, I tell you. It makes it really light. A holes. Then the way forwards. Uh, and actually, I was looking in Chris's video when he was build video, and this one's in absolutely fantastic condition. It's extremely straight. There's no twist uh, in the fuselage at all. Uh, by the way, if it's looking twisted up there, that's purely down to the camera. Uh, it's it's straight as a die. You know, I didn't know or I didn't realise that you get this extra block of foam. Uh, that's going to be really handy because I know, or kind of makes sense now, that why Josh has got his cut here uh, and the, the, this rear section set up for where they've got the flight controller in the back and where Andy got the foam from to do the front because he's hell bent on putting canards on the front, I, which I, well, by the way, I will not be doing. Keep going. Hello, 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 hello. Wow. That's how heavy. What was that weird noise? That's the prop. So, yeah, absolutely huge, huge, great big bays in the front. Uh, I will be running, uh, I need to get this right, the right way round. Uh, the video on the left wing and the receiver on the right wing. Uh, I will set it up so it's obviously S-Bus and I will be putting the receiver and the video transmitter in the wings. Uh, it, it's been absolutely proven now that is the way to go for us, maximum separation. And again, don't get me wrong, there's plenty of separation but if you add these two things in here, uh, you have the, say, the, the, the video transmitter in this side and the receiver in that side. That is, uh, I, I know for many of you which have set up tracks before, that's uh, it's perfectly feasible. However, we will get them out in the wings because it's the right thing to do. Especially if we, if, if you've got any indication of what we do, then you'll understand why separation is absolutely key. Uh, oh, I also did get some servos as well, some uh, Bluebird servos as well from Will. 
Uh, what have we got in here? Two. Uh, I have just seen the motor mounts. Um, I'm not happy about that. That might delay things a little bit. Um, that is a plastic motor mount rather than a metal motor mount. I need to sit down and consider that. I don't. I prefer if the motor mount was metal rather than being plastic. Um, it's just because of the way which we fly and how hard we land uh, when that happens, uh, scheduled and and, and 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 unscheduled as well. So yeah, I need to look into that today to get that. See if I can get my hands on a metal motor mount. And by the way, really well packed by the way. Uh, way well, thank you for that, sir. You can see it's never that. That's the original masking tape on there. The kit was bought to be built and just never got built. And and and. and I know it's sad, but for that, but on the flip side, it's the Jesus wet. Look at the size of the fucking thing. Um, it's monstrous. You've got no idea on proportion on this. It's I, I don't even know what the wingspan is on these. Um, anyway, sorry. Just get back to my point was that I've done it before. I've bought models and just never got around to building them, and then passed them on. Um, there's been models which I've taken one look at and gone, mm, that's probably not going to happen. Uh, what am I looking in here for? Uh, Aderons are uh, AWAR, I've just spotted those. Right, we've got a collection of core flute here in a bag. So what we got? Yeah, main hatch, rear hatch, which is... Yeah, it'll go around that way. I've already free, been in 3D printed the uh, scoop to go on there. It's kicking around here on the desk somewhere. Uh, two bay hatches which we've got, oh there is a massive tip which I got off Josh on the weekend, really impressed by that, uh, is that what you can do is, if yours are, uh, depending on how lucky you've been with the cuts, <laughs> uh, is that what you can do, uh, hello noonies, you right babe? Dog's just coming in, oh somebody was asking about noonies, well quite a few were asking about noonies the other day, uh, she's here, she's big as ever, say hello noons, give me a kiss, ah. <laughs> Yeah, that's the miniature schnauzer. She is cute as a button. Anyway, get back to the tip was to run a bit of filament uh, through that, uh, and then you make a twisting hatch and then run it through the side so that you end up with a folding hatch. I thought that was quite ingenious. I've not heard or seen anybody do that before, um, so I was quite impressed by that. Uh, the core flute is absolutely mega tough, really tough. It's so rigid, uh, not compared, unlike compared. So the, we've got some cheap stuff here, and this is really bendy, uh, and that's about the, probably the best we can get here in the UK, whereas that core flute, I don't know where Chris has been getting it from, um, it is absolutely stonking. So yeah, happy days with that. Right, build. Really, really straightforward to build. You just basically glue in the spars. Uh, and it is not complicated at all. The, the one bit which is going to take the most amount of time for me uh, is actually the laminating. I've kind of already decided what I'm doing with the laminating on this model. Uh, I will, once everything's glued up, like it's just a couple of tubes, a couple of sp uh, uh, to go in, uh, and a couple of rods down the body. Really, really straightforward to do. It's, it's not, a, even with the size of it, it's not a complicated build. Uh, but coming back to my point is that uh, I will be laminating it, of course. I will clear laminate it first, so then I've got that base layer down, and I've got tons of lamb here, and that will, be, again, just because of the size of it, and the, the, it, it will be pretty straightforward to do. Uh, the one bit which is gonna slow me down, I've kind of already decided that I'm going with a black and a white color scheme. Uh, I do have pink, <laughs> I have silver, like a chrome, in fact, what did I show you? Uh, look, I got, these are the colours, I've got black in the car, which I need to go and fish out in a minute. I've got some silver, not much of it though, it's like a chrome brushed aluminium uh, uh, covering. I've got pink, which I'm not doing, because that was, remember, I bought the pink to go on some of the slope saws to try and get the kids involved in flying, and I've got some white. So, the colour scheme which I'm going to do for is what I've, what I've seen on... Uh, Josh's is down here is that uh, in those little V's I'm going to put white in there and then I'm going to cover uh, in line with the wings I'm going to have those at, all the, at least the top black 
uh, and then with the bottom I'm just going to leave uh, clear and the reason why I'm just going to leave the underside clear uh, is straightforward maintenance is that if I'm expecting a large number of landings in, uh, on, on rougher ground then it would be nuts for me to put black glam over the top of it knowing full well as I'm sure you can appreciate that I would potentially end up just ruining the layer of lamb, lamb on the bottom so yeah that's the, that's the approach for that. So, yeah, quick summary. Uh, crossfire in the right wing. Video transmitter embedded in the left wing. Uh, servos I've already got here. There were some Bluebird ones. Uh, camera up front. Yeah, it will be uh, either a run cam or I do have... I've got a Fox in Night somewhere or another. It, it was quite expensive at the time. Um, or it will be a run cam eagle in the nose. Uh, there was actually, going off topic slightly, there was an interesting conversation on the weekend. We think, we feel, and I, I kind of, well, Andy feels, and I kind of agree with him, that run cam specifically have maybe have had their day, especially with the quality of the cameras coming out from uh, Foxeer and uh, Cadex, for example. Those cameras, those last couple of cameras I've had, absolutely corking like the picture difference uh, between a run cam eagle which cost me 70 quid and this tiny little one fox ear one which only cost me 22 pounds from hobby rc uh is that it was not it was massive difference between the pair of them and that was just in the nano tan and the video from a couple of days ago anyway digress I will be putting a Fox in night camera in the nose just so that I have a really wide uh, range uh, light range so that if it's really early in the morning or very light in the evening I ha it will go to black and white and I will be able to land that's obviously a concern with the time and cost investment in a model like this uh, batteries is what that hobby king box was a few moments ago uh, I've been and bought four 5200 4S's so I can run them up in pairs so then it will be 8S and then it will be a 10,000 8S pack which I've got in the nose I do have some other eight, uh, 4S packs and uh, 8,000 4S's which I could potentially use as well uh, but I, I want to stay on 4S but of course I can put two 4S's together and get to 8S so that will be the way forwards I'm also expecting this week uh, is uh, while I've got a 100 amp ESC which will will boot up as 8S I've actually uh, but it's only uh, it's the Turnergy uh, plush ESC and apparently they're fine. Uh, I just wanted to play on the air of caution uh, and I will be going and I've bought a Hobby Wing, I think it's Hobby Wing ESC and Opto uh, and again it's fine for it's been a, uh, an Opto ESC basically has no back built into it that was the difference that's the I, the bit which you're really interested in. Uh, it's cost me a hundred quid or so from Will Spin Models. It'll be here in the next day or two, I'm sure. Uh, and we'll mount that up in the back and I will add an extra heat sinking on top of it as well, although it does look pretty meaty. Uh, the Eagle Tree Vector will be being supplied by the Ranger 1600 up there. The Ranger 1600, going slightly off topic, it flies really nice, but come on, let's be fair. It's not a model for me. Um, I, it, d line of sight, I think it would be a really good model. On a calmer day, it's absolutely it's beautiful to fly. Uh, maybe to if you kept it really light, you could maybe do some thermaling with it. Although it's a 2,000 wingspan would be pretty good. But the reality is, is that it it, it can't cope with a stronger headwind. The last time I flew uh, the Ranger 1600, uh, it was doing 15 miles an hour backwards it just could not cope with the wind uh, and yeah that kind of sealed it for me so I will be ripping the vector out of it which was an absolute royal pain in the rear to get in there um, it would be a dream to work inside of this bay look at the blooming size of it you can get like almost your both hands in there so yeah that's what we'll be doing this one uh, I don't I, I'm not expecting this one to be a long build per se like as you can tell it's just a bit bigger Right, so with that said, time for me to wrap up. Really, in summary, yeah, bad Matt, always said I was never going to buy one, and then of course Josh and Andrew have been and got theirs up, uh, and they look absolutely amazing in the sky. I have seen them break multiple spars in theirs uh, for one reason or another. Um, obviously, if your name's Josh and you're trying to pick a fight with two mini talons, I think the mini talons might come off better. <laughs> I'll 
insert a clip. <laughs> that was really unlucky for Josh, really, really unlucky for Josh. Um, so yeah, build, really straightforward. It's not complicated. What happens in the future? And there's my alarm off, I need to be going. Right. On that note, for myself, Matt, a massive thank you to you for taking the time to watch this episode. I really, genuinely do uh, appreciate that. And of course, if you've got any comments or suggestions on this track, uh, please just let me know in the comments section uh, underneath this video. Uh, I d as far as the, the build process, I. I, I won't be doing, I'll do a build overview for you, uh, the actual building of it is going to be so spread out over the next, because I'm not realistically not going to be flying this for two weeks, okay, it's in two weeks time it will be going out for its maiden uh, and yeah, you, I'm recording this on Monday, you probably won't see the edited version of this video until later on the week because I don't have the time to edit videos at the moment, I've got tons, tons of time which needs to be spent on fitness, I've got a horrific work schedule at the moment uh, and of course I'm like many of you you've probably got many annoyances at home at the moment as well I've got four of them uh, and uh, yeah they also need time as well it's all about priorities isn't it and of course those change over time anyway questions comments about the full-size daddy track look at the size of it it is massive <laughs> landed for myself, Matt, as always, thank you very much. I'll see you again shortly. Cheerios! I like to make my missus a cup of tea. We've been together for 90 years now. And what I like to do is get the tea bag and then dip it in and out. My wife calls it tea bagging. Uh, it, 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 she, it, she smiles when I do it. Uh, I quite like it when I teabag her tea. It makes her very happy.